Well, today, after 40 years, although Betty Page still refuses to be seen, she does break her silence and talks to real life's Tim Estilos. She was undeniably one of America's most popular pinups. Betty Page only worked as a model for seven years, but amazingly, in just that short period of time, she appeared in more magazines than Marilyn Monroe and Cindy Crawford combined. During the 50s, Betty's picture was everywhere, on hundreds of books and magazine covers, monthly calendars, and even playing cards. No doubt about it, photographers just adored Betty Page. And why not? I mean, after all, she was the perfect combination of girl-next-door sweetness and a naughty sensuality all wrapped up in one drop-dead gorgeous package. And what made it all work was that Betty loved the camera. But most importantly, the camera loved Betty. Betty's early years growing up in Tennessee during the Depression gave no hint she'd someday become a pinup legend. I got a chance to ask Betty about her past, but under one condition that we preserve her memory and not show her as she looks today. I always got up mimicking poses of movie stars in the magazines, models and movie stars, and that was my first beginnings of posing. I had no idea then I'd ever be a pinup model. <laughs> but it was after Betty graduated college that she got offered the chance of a lifetime, a Hollywood screen test. They tried to make me up to look like Joan Crawford. They bunched my hair way out on the sides, penciled my eyebrows, big, long eyebrows, way up high like she used to wear, and a great big wide mouth, twice as wide as mine. And I hardly recognized myself when I saw the screen test. Betty's first shot at Hollywood stardom fizzled. So in 1950, she headed to New York City, where she got a job as a secretary. It wasn't long before her beauty caught the eye of amateur photographers in the local camera clubs. I didn't pose for them in a nude at first. I wore bikinis, and I never felt I was doing anything wrong when I started posing nude, even for the camera clubs. Because after all, I don't believe God disapproves of nudity. He put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, naked as jaybirds, and they would have probably been naked all their lives if they hadn't disobeyed him and he ran them out of the garden. Pretty soon, Betty's popularity spread beyond the limited circles of the amateur camera clubs. She began modeling for scores of men's magazines. And in 1955, she was one of the first centerfolds for a brand new magazine called Playboy. Plenty of people began to notice there was something special about Betty Page. People have said it was my smile, that I looked very happy, that I enjoyed my work, and I did, especially when I was playing in the water on the beach in Florida. I sometimes imagined the camera was uh, my boyfriend, and I would be playing to him in some of the poses and smiling at him. I sometimes had that in my mind. But Betty's career wasn't strictly limited to men's magazines. She also made her mark posing as a naughty bad girl for campy fetish and bondage photos, as well as dancing in a series of short burlesque style 8mm films. Long before Madonna, Betty Page wore a cone-shaped bra to tweak the conservative mindset of the 1950s. They keep saying that I'm some sort of sexual innovator. I never thought of any of my poses as being sexual in any way. I never had anything like that in my mind when I was posing. Unfortunately, as one of the most admired pinups of her day, Betty's love life was far from perfect. Her three attempts at marriage failed, and she even turned down an offer from Howard Hughes to meet with him. Popular Betty Page was one lonely model. Do you know when you start getting any name as a model, they shy away from you. They're afraid of you. I had fewer offers to go out in New York and in Miami than I ever did before I started modeling or since even. For seven years, Betty continued to model, but eventually her priorities changed. She wanted something different out of life, something the modeling business couldn't supply. So in December 1957, at the height of her career, Betty Page packed her bags and left New York City. After seven years, you were all over all these magazine covers. Why did you quit? I thought I was getting too old. I was 34 years old. Not many pinup models was old as I was. 
And I was almost 27 when I started modeling. And I thought there were too many pictures of me around. I thought the photographers wouldn't want to use me anymore. And I just sort of got tired of it. But even though Betty had dropped out of sight, her legacy of photos stayed in circulation over the years gaining new fans. Numerous magazine and newspaper articles fueled interest in her work and her whereabouts. But it took a comic book called The Rocketeer that featured Betty to officially bring her back as a bona fide pop culture icon. I gotta tell you, it's absolutely amazing just how popular Betty Page is after all this time. I mean, it's been nearly 40 years since the last pinup photo was shot of Betty, and today, check this out. There's Betty Page calendars, there's newsletters, there's trading cards. You like comic books? There's even a Betty Page comic book. Let's face it, after all these years, everybody still loves Betty. She's the third most popular pinup of all time, right behind Marilyn Monroe and Jane Mansfield. Uh, really? And in many cases, she pushes Jane for second place. Betty Page is the last great icon of the 1950s. Like James Dean and Marilyn Monroe, she brought something modern to the era. When you look at a picture of Betty Page, you think you could know her, and that if you did know her, she would like you. She's like the girl next door. She's just the greatest American pinup, and that's why she's eternal. Now, what you're probably wondering right about now is, what does Betty Page look like today after all these years? But to tell you the truth, part of Betty's allure was that air of mystery that surrounded her ever since she dropped out of the limelight some 39 years ago. And besides, as far as Betty's concerned, she'd just rather her fans remember her the way she used to be. I wouldn't want to see a model when she's old and out of shape. Who would? There's nothing to look at. You want to look at them when they're young and beautiful, with beautiful bodies. I didn't look bad in the 50s, and I was in the best of health and had my figure and everything. I've only started falling apart the last couple of years. <laughs> I hate old age. <laughs> These days, Betty Page is leading a quiet and very private life in California. And even though Betty says she hates getting older, she's still pretty active and pursuing a variety of interests like gardening and dining out with friends. One of her favorite pastimes is just staying home late at night and watching old movies on cable TV. And you might be asking, who are Betty Page's favorite contemporary models? Well, Cindy Crawford and Claudia Schiffer top her list. Man, you know, it sounds like she still has some spirit and some fire. She's got plenty voice. of energy. And it was a nice sounding voice, very comfortable and oh, very, yeah. very warm. But I got to ask you, 40 years later, why did she decide now to speak? And, and why to us? I wish I could tell you why. Yeah. She's turned down so many interviews from so many other people. And uh, we just put, put in a call to her. She said yes. And uh, I think she personally just likes real life. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> we nothing like wrong it with that. for that. Nothing wrong but with that. I got to ask. Tim, you know I gotta ask. Oh, this. don't go there. Come don't, on, no. come, Tim, don't play. Come they, on, man. They have been nagging me all week long to tell everybody just what Betty Page looks like. And Betty, I told you I wouldn't give it away. I'll tell you this much. Though. Yeah. She still wears her hair with the same cute bangs that she used to when she was a model. Oh, and uh, when you look in Betty Page's eyes and see that smile, you still see some of the young Betty. Is there anything else that might remind you of the gorgeous icon that she once was? I mean, well, I, I can't tell you when I enjoyed an interview yeah. more. And I tell you, when it, when it was all over, she reached out, gave me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. I'm one of the few gentlemen remaining that can say I got a kiss from the legendary Betty Page. Oh, man, you can come here and rub you it in. You be jealous. Be jealous, You're going to come in here be and jealous. rub it in. You and Betty Page. I'm going to rub it in. Nice interview. That was very nice. Thank you.